go to the load complete. And notice here in load complete, which you can also get a free trial of it to try it out, we can actually say, let's go ahead and create a new project in here. And in here, you can say the name or IP address of the server to be monitored. Be very careful with what I'm doing in here first, because in here I'm running this on local host. Everything is running on machines, so I can come here and say local host. But what happens, for instance, if I actually took my Silverlight application and I hosted it somewhere in New York right now where www.falafel.com is, then this will be www.falafel.com. And a lot of people would ask the question, I know it came in during the questions portion, uh, what does the other server sitting somewhere around the world, what does it have to have installed on it for us to be able to, to run this from load complete? For instance, load complete is only available on my machine. How is it going to understand what's going on if this is running on a completely different server? And that's another thing that is very good about load complete, which is there is really nothing you need to do on the other side. Remember, what we are listening to is HTTP requests and responses going back and forth between this machine and the server machine. Alrighty? So one of the questions that is kind of tricky, what is the difference between monitoring the local host or monitoring another server maybe in Australia right now that are communicating together. To be honest with you, 90% I would say there's no difference. It's still recording all the HTTP requests between both of them and it doesn't matter which one I'm monitoring because the HTTP requests and responses going back and forth. So why is it so important to actually maybe add more monitors? The portion about monitoring other servers is not about the HTTP requests and response. It's about actually what is the state of the CPU and memory and all the other profiling and performance profiles available on that server at that time. If I have 100 people hitting www.falafel.com, how is that impacted the CPU on the server? That's when this is important because I am monitoring now a different profiler from a different machine, not my own. So you can definitely add this on localhost and come in here and add more servers if you have multi-farm, for instance, if you have multiple servers that you know their IP address or their names on the uh, VPN or whatever, you can monitor them this way. Does that make sense? Hopefully, that's one of the major questions a lot of people ask about for this, why does this exist in here. I'm going to say next, and it's now connecting to my localhost, as you can see. And now this is also very important, which is the quality of service parameter. I am saying in here, anytime I'm going to be uh, testing my local host, if any page comes up in more than five seconds, I would like to make this an error. I will not accept the result that a website has any pages that take more than five seconds to load. And you can set it here however you'd like. So be careful with Silverlight applications. Sometimes if a machine does not have uh, the Silverlight loaded, and it's not cached, for instance, it might take eight or nine seconds the first time to download the entire ZEP file, or maybe download even the plugin for Silverlight first from Microsoft. So be careful when you set this for the first time to make this uh, how, how this works. The maximum time to first byte, which is definitely a major thing, which is after you make the request, how long does it take the system to start sending you anything back? Alrighty? That means I want to find out how long is it taking on the server to really realize my request to start sending anything back. Okay? So all the stuff you can set in here. It makes more sense, of course, for Ajax applications and ASP.NET and PHP applications. But for Silverlight, I want to find out how long it will take us to get the first ZEP file, which is maybe important for you to know if a thousand people requesting the ZEP file at the same time. But more importantly, I am interested in finding out every single WCF and RIA call that will happen from the client to go get data from the server, how long is it taking, and how much uh, data is going back and forth between my client and that server. This is the important part for me to be able to realize the performance. So let's go ahead and, and, uh, and say finish, and now I get my scenarios, I get my stations, I get my test, I can record a scenario if I want to, I can say record the scenario, name of the test, uh, I can see, use it in Internet Explorer. Now I can use it in Firefox, and with the latest release, also we can use it with Google Chrome as well. It's extremely important to say clear browser data. I can't tell you enough how important it is to clear the browser data, because you want a real test that we have never seen that Silverlight app or cached in the ASP.NET temporary directory or anything like that. So clear this browser data to make sure you get the real test every time you run this. And in the open URL, I'm just going to paste in the localhost uh, file in here for the home. Oops, no, that's not the correct one. Let me uh, run this in IE. There you 
go. And we'll uh, build this uh, solution. Yep, stop it from running. And I'm going to run it one more time. I don't want to run it locally on the file system. I just want to run it on localhost. Oh, yeah, no. That's because this, this guy is the uh, started project. I need to come in here, we'll say, set as a started project, and we'll run it right now. All right, that's much better. It's running on localhost. And we'll minimize this guy. We'll go back to load complete. And in here, there you go. It's HTTP localhost, and I need to hit the home page for this guy, Internet Explorer. Let's go ahead and record. Guess what happens when I click on that? Now, test complete will start Internet Explorer, and we'll go visit that page. You notice it's recording right now. So the traffic right now is being recorded between my machine and that server. Yes, I know it's still on localhost, but even if that was a different server, it would be listening on that. I'm going to click on silver con silver light controls that will load the grid, um, and I can click now on telerik controls. It will also load the grid. We'll get the data, and now let's go ahead and stop this recording, and let's see, for instance, what got recorded for me in here. One thing that you'll have to remember is that load complete is listening on all HTTP, not only your application, anything on this machine is using HTTP. So if Skype is running or my live messenger is running, I might actually see some messages coming from these things in here as well. And sometimes I do see a lot of things coming from Skype and live messages and other tools that have nothing to do with what I'm doing in here. First of all, there is my zap file being requested. So I can see the request and I can see the response, the 200 OK. It's a Silverlight app being downloaded right there. So all that stuff is important for me to know. Where are the WCF calls that were made during the, the file? Look at this one. It's called Get Salesperson. If I click on if I see the request, for instance, for this, there is a getter for the client bin for test complete web server adventureworks.svc. You didn't see any of the stuff in just hitting that website, but behind the scene, uh, all the stuff is going on and load complete can listen in on all these HTTP requests being made through the zap file. As you can see, the refer is the zap file to go through a WCF RIA service to be able to get the get salesperson by passing the total count and so on. And I can actually see how many times all the stuff is is run okay you can also even see the sl medallion medallion anu.png guess what this is this is actually the little uh, logo that shows up while i'm refreshing the grid to show it is busy it had to download the png because that's a request as well from the application as well all right so all the stuff is being recorded what can i do with these things i can go to my tests in here and i can say i'd like to create my first test based on one virtual user run that scenario on my master machine I can choose the emulation of the recorded browser, which is IE, or I can actually test it on the other throughput, like IE 7, 8, 9, or 10, Firefox, Chrome, Safari, even on iPhone, Safari. What will happen if people hit my application from any, uh, from any of these? So it's definitely a lot of things you can do in here with maximum speed from DSL and LAN and so on. All righty? I'm going to run this really quickly to show you what happens when we run this. We're going to run it really quickly. We're going to get a report, and during the report run, it will send all the requests from my client to the server, so I know that it will download the ZEP file again, and also will do all the WCF requests to get the response for the get salesperson. So you can actually take a look at all the basic quality graph, and it finished really quickly. We didn't have much going on in that test. And notice the test has a failure. There's two things in here that fail. If you read the failure in here, notice that I said the threshold for the response time need to be a maximum of two seconds, and this one came in in 2.8 seconds. That's why this one failed, because of my quality of service said it needs to be less than two. There's another one in here also that I said the threshold for the page to load is five seconds, but this one came up in 5.5 seconds. That's why these failed, because of my requirement that no page could take more than five seconds 